Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with my blind reaction to uh, Monarch Legacy of Monsters Episode 1. This is a first impression reaction, and one that I've been, I don't know why, but kind of putting off for a while. You see, this is something that I, I had planned to do since this first started, and I just... I'm not 100% sure why I've uh, procrastinated on it. My entire family, pretty much, except for my mother, are pretty big Godzilla fans. Like, me, my sister, my brother, we grew up with the Godzilla movies because of my dad. He uh, tended to have pretty much all of them on VHS. And then, nowadays, he has, like, DVDs and stuff as well. Um, but yeah, we would grow up watching them, and as new ones would continue to come out, we would see them. And we still do. Because, like, e even with Godzilla Minus One, which re recently came out, we went to the theater and saw it together. And we're more than likely gonna do so, I would imagine with Godzilla X Kong when that comes out later this year. So, yeah, th there's a lot to look forward to in terms of Godzilla for someone like me. Now, we have this series that is canon to the legendary MonsterVerse Godzilla and Kong and all of that um, that is currently going on. I don't know if this series is going to be important for Godzilla X Kong. I don't know if it's going to like connect to that in any strong way. Um, all I know is that it is canon to the MonsterVerse. And that I am very interested to see what it has in store for kind of this universe and how it works. Now, there are a couple things I do know about this series. Uh, first off, I do know that uh, Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell both star in it. I don't know in uh, what capacity or who their characters are, but I know they're in it. Um, and, and that's pretty fun because both are really great actors. And I really like seeing Wyatt Russell especially in stuff nowadays. Um, for those who didn't know, like... I, I don't know if it was one of his first roles, but one of the first roles I discovered him in was in Black Mirror. Uh, he, he was in an episode of Black Mirror, and it, it's actually one of my favorite episodes. Um, but he also more recently was in uh, the Marvel series Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and is going to be returning for future uh, MCU installments. I think he might be in the Thunderbolts, for example. Um, so, I, I, I've seen Kurt Russell in a lot of stuff, obviously. But, it, it's going to be cool to see them in this kind of universe. And, like, there's already been some really great actors in the MonsterVerse. Like, the 2014 Godzilla had Brian Cranston in it. Uh, we've had Ken Watanabe, uh, Brian Tyree Henry. Um, uh, my name is, or, or my mind is completely escaping with her name, but the girl who plays Eleven from Stranger Things, <laughs> she was in there too. Um... I, I don't know why I can't think of her name right now. Um, but either way, yeah, it, it's going to be pretty exciting to see. Now, I also know that there are other monsters besides Godzilla in this. I, knew, I do know Godzilla is in this. I don't know, again, to what degree, but I do know that Godzilla is in this. But I also know there's other monsters as well, uh, including new original ones for this series. And obviously with the title, I know that this centers around the organization Monarch, which I think was introduced in 
King of the Monsters, I want to say. I might be completely wrong about that. Maybe they were introduced in uh, the 2014 Godzilla. I don't know. But they're going to be, I guess, the main focus, hence the title. So this seems to be kind of just another in the line of recent franchises that have added streaming shows to the canon of their series. Let's be honest, the MCU started this. This was a big thing when the MCU started it with uh, WandaVision and Loki and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Because no other like movie series or franchise has basically required you to also watch um, shows to understand what was going on. Um, especially on streaming. It was a new concept that others have now tried to mimic. Um, because basically money. <laughs> it got it, it got the MCU more money and more viewership numbers and people definitely did uh, tune in. Um, and I, I've kind of said in the past that I'm not a huge fan of this because not everybody is able to afford like this extra streaming service when there's already so many others that they have that they're subscribed to and it's just it's not the best option and then this one also just happened to be on i think this was on apple tv and it's like who the fuck even has Apple TV? So someone, so another streaming service people are going to have to purchase, at least temporarily, just to be able to watch this series. It's like, what the hell? That's why I actually like the news that's been coming in lately, that uh, some, some streaming services are planning on, like, combining with others. It's like, yeah, that's probably going to raise up prices a bit, but... In the long run, it will save money because there's not as many streaming services and overall it's going to be cheaper than paying for all of these streaming services separately. It's like if Disney Plus, for example, I don't remember what the actual services that were being talked about were, but if Disney Plus, for example, were to buy, like, let's say, Max and... Um, well, Apple TV and all this other stuff. Let's let's say they bought a bunch of those. It would they would probably raise their prices a little bit, but not like an ex exorbitant amount. Like they might raise it like ten bucks, which is still notable. But and, and I've heard people complaining like, oh, these streamers are just discovering what cable is, and it's like, not really. <laughs> that's not that's not really what's happening here. It's not really the same thing. They're just, they're combining services because they want to, you know, have a monopoly on this kind of thing, which by the way is not a good thing, but given the circumstances, it's it makes it more accessible to the average person. Because the average person can't afford to pay $10 for, like, 10 different streaming services every month. $100 just for streaming services? Like, cable's cheaper than that, usually. <laughs> it's like, that's, that's ridiculous. Like, the average person doesn't make as much as you would think. Not here in America, at least. It's like combined with like phone bills and obviously rent or or uh, mortgage or whatnot. Uh, then on top of that, you have like you know heating and cooling bills. You have your car bills. You have food. With everything that people have to pay for, and the average American just not being like super wealthy. It's just, it's it's ridiculous. And, and then, like, you're going to expect, like, 10 different streamers at the same time? 
it's 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 going to be better if they all combine like this because then the price will be lower it will save money even if it's still high like oh i have to pay 50 60 dollars now because they all combined you're gonna have to pay like a hundred or more before it's like that's still like half off you're still saving money And don't get me wrong, $50 a month is absolutely ludicrous, but still. Anyway, I, I, I'm going to stop ranting about all of that because it's like, that could just turn into this entire video. Um, the point is that this series, I, I don't know how required viewing it is in order to understand what's going to come in the future for this legendary monster verse. But uh, we shall see. Um, and for those of you who are new, just a little note as to what this video is. So if you're new and don't know what a first impression on this channel means, it basically means that I check out the first episode of this series and then determine whether or not it's something I want to continue reacting to, watch on my own time, or just not something I'm not interested in and I'm going to drop. Um, if it is something that I do want to continue uh, reacting to, I will put it onto my list and I will get to it at some point in the future. It could be soon, it could be months away, it's always just hard to tell but it will be gotten to at some point in the future. If it is something I choose to watch on my own, then I don't react to any more of it. I just, you know, take it off of the reaction schedule and try to get to it on my own time. <laughs> and if it's something that I decide I'm just not that into, then I just don't watch it. It's really that simple. Um, so yeah, this first impression will decide whether or not this is something I want to react to. And knowing how much I do enjoy Godzilla and Kaiju stuff and all, I feel like this would have to be notably bad or boring to really turn me away from this. But it could be. Like, that is altogether possible. And... One last thing before we get going. Um, I've heard nothing about this in terms of what people think about it. Like, usually when a series comes out, I'll hear people talk about it or like, oh, people will say like, oh, I really like this series, even if I don't hear spoilers. I've heard nothing <laughs> about what people think of this. I've seen that people are reacting to it, but that's about it. Like, some of my favorite reactors have gotten to it, but I don't know what anyone actually thinks of it because I've never heard anyone talk about it. Um, but that does lead into a more blind reaction. So, hey, I can't really complain all that much, right? That being said, we are going to get into this and hope for the best. Sorry for the yawning. It is early. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades black and then it fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So I'm sorry about having to switch over to the, uh to the online version and everything, but, you know, I wanted to know, like, what they were saying at parts, because there was a lot of, like, foreign language used in this, which I kind of didn't entirely expect, because this is the American MonsterVerse uh, stuff. Um, so, so I didn't entirely expect that we'd be getting, like, you know, a bunch of Japanese and everything. But at the same time, like, it, it, it kind of makes sense with Godzilla and everything. 
Uh, yeah. Either way, this was a good start to this series. It, uh, it delved a lot into, um, the entire, like, human side of things. And, and I'm not one of those people who, like, oh, just let, let, just show the monsters destroying stuff. I don't want to see the humans. This is a Godzilla movie, not a human movie. I hate that argument. It is such a stupid argument. It is never valid, in my opinion. Um, because it's like, you, you can't have a Godzilla movie with just the monsters. You have to have the human element. And it's not just from like a, oh, you need that for the movie to work or anything. No. You need that for the themes of the movie to work. Like, people who are like saying that there's not enough of the monsters and there needs to be less humans in Godzilla movies and stuff, and in, I guess, just MonsterVerse movies in general, don't understand what Godzilla is about. <laughs> um... And then there's some, there's some people who will just say, like, oh, well, we just wish that the human stuff was done better. And I, I've heard, like, people, for example, say, like, oh, Godzilla Minus One, the human stuff in that is fantastic. But then you, like, compare to, I don't know, Godzilla 2014 and people, like, complain and bitch about it all the time. And it's like, I, I just, I don't get it. Because, one, I, I, I actually like the human stuff in Godzilla 2014. But also, um, I think it's necessary for getting the point of the movies across for what Godzilla is, you know, representing. No matter which version you're watching, no matter wh what kind of themes the specific film, or in this case series, is representing... The point is still that, you know, the themes don't work without a human cast. The themes and ideas don't, like, like can't be properly showcased without that human element. Um, and this this episode did have a lot of monster stuff in it. It, it didn't hold back from that. Uh, we got to see multiple monsters throughout the entire thing. We, like it, it was made very clear. Like this is a massive, notable part of this canon. We're not just going to ignore the monsters just for the human element, but yeah, we're going to focus mostly on the humans because that's how you tell a fucking story. <laughs> Um, and I think it handled that balance well, though. I want to look up something here, so, uh, just let me check this real quick. I want to, I want to make sure on the timelines here. Because I think there was only two timelines that we saw in, uh, this this episode at least let me just make sure though yes there are two timelines there's the 2015 timeline and the 1959 timeline Okay, also, um, Keiko and, and Bill, the two characters that were in the 1959 timeline, and Keiko is the girl who fell at the end there, um, Keiko is, uh, Kate's grandmother, the one that was shown in the picture there. So, we know Keiko survives, <laughs> Um, I, I don't think that's a spoiler because I, I think we were supposed to know that from, especially from that picture of her. Um, so yeah.
Plus, uh, it even says that the files belonged to Bill and everything. So yeah, it, it's uh, it, it's very much making that clear. But yeah, the the stuff in 2015 is one year after the uh, the first of the legendary Godzilla movies here, the 2014 one. Um, and then, the, obviously, 1959 takes place well, well, uh, in the past. <laughs> um, there was also the, um, 1973 bit at the start that was, like, during Kong Skull, Skull Island. So there is that as well. Um, but let's talk about, like, I guess these two timelines then. Um... So the 2015 one, we have Kate coming to Japan to deal with her father's uh, affairs after his uh, pr supposed passing. We actually don't know if he's dead. Um, it makes that clear in the episode that he, he, his, his craft just went missing. It's not actually clear what happened. They just kind of assume he's dead. So, yeah. Um, but she's there to handle the affairs and finds that there's other people living in the apartment that was supposed to be her father's. So she ends up finding out that her father had two families, uh, her and her mom, and then this guy and his mom. And that, you know, that's not the best thing. <laughs> but... Either way, she has to deal with, you know, learning about just kind of everything that ha that had been happening, as well as dealing with her clear trauma from G-Day, as I guess we're calling it. <laughs> I don't remember if that was mentioned in the movies at all, if it was referred to as G-Day in the movies, but um, basically... She was there when Godzilla attacked San Francisco. I, I guess she was a teacher. And, and she was on a bus with some students. And the bridge was collapsing. She managed to get a few of them out of the bus. But the rest of them died when the bus fell. And it's like, Jesus fuck. <laughs> okay. I mean, logically speaking, yeah. We know and understand that in any of these movies, kids die. But I feel like it rarely shows that. And it's just... I mean, it didn't, like, show anything gruesome or anything. Because these movies don't really do that. Um, but it's like... Yeah. That's still horrifying. A bus full of kids fell. Like, undeniably killing everyone in there. Like, that's horrifying. Like, of course this girl has survivor's guilt. Of course she has trauma. It's like, I, I, I almost feel that just watching this. <laughs> it's, it's really horrific. But it, it's, it's, it's kind of like in zombie movies. It's just not something that really is touched on too often. But And I kind of like that they did have the absolute balls to touch on that. Phrasing. <laughs> I realized that as soon as I said it. You know what I mean. I, I appreciate that they actually went there. Because most zombie media, like you watch a zombie movie and stuff, you're not going to see a child zombie. It's just not going to happen. It's really rare that you will ever see a child zombie because it's entirely too fucked up for most people to put in there. Uh, people don't want to see that. But I think that's kind of what makes it more powerful. The fact that people don't want to see it. The fact that it's so fucked up. And because of that, um, it affects you more and shows just how horrific this situation is and that's actually one big reason i really appreciate the telltale slash skybound uh walking dead game because you see you see children die in that game 
you see a child zombie in that game. And yes, it's entirely fucked up. It's horrific. It's really fucking depressing. But that's the point. It's one of those rare occasions you actually get to see that shit. I think the the series did uh, that kind of thing too, but you know, um, not not as much and not as notably, I, I guess you could say. Anywho, though, um, the point is that I like it when shows are willing to go to that level, even if it's really hard to watch, even if it's really upsetting and depressing and fucked up. Because, again, that's the point. You're supposed to see G-Day as this horrific disaster. It's not supposed to be seen as something, you know, fun or exciting. That's missing the point. <laughs> it's not supposed to be, like, a good thing. <laughs> um. So... I think that showcasing that was smart on the uh, on the writers and everything. But I'm also glad that, like with, again, pretty much any Godzilla media, they don't really show the deaths. You know what I mean? Like, there's no, like, gore and blood and shit, like, all over the place. It's It's not that kind of thing. And it's not meant to be. Um, but yeah, so they, there's this Godzilla, um, like siren and they have to like bunker underground until they get it all clear. And eventually, um, Kate and her half brother go to meet, uh, his, um, ex who he's been ghosting, which is, you know, not great. Taking a little cue from your father there, it sounds like with how you treat the people you supposedly love. Jesus. <laughs> but they go to her uh, because she's good with like this tech stuff and she could help them uh, figure out what was in the safe that their shared father was hiding. And it ends up being a shit ton of Monarch files that, well, as we know, belong to Bill, who we see in the 59 timeline. Um, and in the 59 timeline, we get to follow Bill and Kate as they're on this, uh, where, where are they exactly? Let, let me make sure on this. <laughs> they're in Kazakhstan. Okay. With Monarch official, official Colonel Leland Shaw. Uh, and Lee is, of course, Wyatt Russell. So, yeah, they're all working for Monarch in, in the late 50s. And they're in Kazakhstan to find, uh, to find out anything they can about, like, you know, this monster stuff. Because that's what Monarch does. <laughs> so they go into what seems like this restricted area. They meet a kid there who basically tells them, oh, yeah, the, the, the radiation shit, it, it's all a smoke screen. It's a lie. Um, just to hide what's really here. So they go and they end up finding a bunch of what appears to be like Mudo-like eggs. Not not quite the same, but similar. Um, si similar creatures. <laughs> and so we see that they want to, you know, find out what they can to get any kind of information. But Lee is not really on board with it. He's less enthused about going down there and everything but he eventually relents and agrees to go down with uh with the names are escaping me keiko he agrees to go down with keiko um while bill is going to be the one to pull them up but while they're down there the ground ends up like you know, caving in and the the bugs awaken and start attacking. And while they're trying to get back up on the ropes, Keiko is dragged down 
by the the by the bugs and we kind of like assumed a little bit that she died but then it, again it's like once you you kind of realize contextually that she's the grandmother of Kate it's like you you realize no she can't have died <laughs> for multiple reasons that's just not possible here um and again seeing that info in the um in the uh description there the synopsis of the episode i don't really consider that like a huge spoiler because i felt like it was again very obvious they were telling us that by showing the grandmother in the footprint and like showing her face and everything we should have been able i i should have been able to put that together i just didn't <laughs> Of course, also switching uh, to the online player partway through also, like, scrambled me a little bit, if I'm being fair. Um, but yeah, we, we got to see a little bit of Godzilla. We got to see some other uh, Titans at, in the cold open with John Goodman. We got to see... We got to see quite a bit of the monster action. And it was... It was really good i really enjoyed like the performances i enjoyed like how far they were willing to go with things and yeah i think that this was a strong start but this is a series that i think i would rather watch on my own time and let me tell you why it's not because of the entire subtitle issue or like having to watch it from the online player or anything. It's specifically because I would rather watch this series at my own pace. Like if I were to put this on like uh, the schedule kind of thing we're doing now, like once a week and everything, I don't know if I would want to like dedicate myself to specifically that um schedule with this i feel like this would be better enjoyed like just when i get when i want to get to it i i don't want to like hold myself back if in case i want to do more episodes than one a week and i don't want to like necessarily be forced to have to do one every single week I I want to do this at my own pacing. So, yeah. I'm definitely interested to see what more can happen with this. And how much more intense and exciting and wild this series is going to get. Um... I like that it's taking place over different time periods, showing, like, different uh, situations going on, all centering around Monarch and this information they have and everything. Again, right now we only have, like, really two time periods, unless you want to count the 73 part from the cold open as well. We, we, we have, uh, again, 2015 and 1959. Uh, but there might be more, like, in the future episodes. I, I don't know, necessarily. But I definitely am interested in finding out. Like I said, though, I'm going to watch it on my own time. Uh, nonetheless, I think that this was still a worthwhile uh, first impression. I still enjoyed this. And... I want to hear what you thought. Uh, tell me in the comments below what are your thoughts uh, regarding this first episode of Monarch Legacy of Monsters. Let me know. And for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.